Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Bob Smither, Creole board member and chair of the capital campaign. And it is my great pleasure to welcome you here today as we celebrate our new facilities. And of course, to recognize that these facilities are only possible because of you, the friends of Creole Bay. Thanks to the generosity of our friends, 107 of our friends, we raised $230,000 toward this new building. Uh, I also want to take a moment to recognize some other friends of Creole. Uh, it is uh, Florida State Representative Anna Escamani here. Nope. Okay. Uh, Craig O'Neill, Assistant Director of Communications, uh, City of Winter Park. He's not here either. Uh, City Commissioner Marty Sullivan. Are you here, Marty? Uh, Terry Olson, Director of Cultural and Artistic uh, Affairs, uh, Orange, Orange County. County. Nope. And finally, President and CEO of United Arts, Jennifer Evans. Part of the mission of Creoldi is to uh, provide uh, opportunities for individuals to express themselves creatively. But as the years went by, that got harder and harder to do because we ran out of room. And uh, it was uh, not uncommon to begin a semester with 100 people on a waiting list, children too. And this was particularly uh, difficult in the ceramics and the jewelry programs. But again, thanks to you, we are now able to do something about that waiting list and to continue to work toward fulfilling our mission. On behalf of the students, faculty, staff, and board of Creole thank you so much for your tremendous support of our capital campaign. Please give yourselves a well-deserved round of applause. Uh, next up is uh, to talk about other funding for the campaign, Betsy Schreier, Grants and Special Projects Manager of Creole Please welcome Betsy. So I want to a, give a special thanks first and foremost to our grant funders, um, which would be the uh, State of Florida, Department of Arts and Culture, and or Division of Arts and Culture, and also to the Dr. Phillips Charities. Dr. Phillips Charities gave us a grant of $75,000 towards this project. <laughs> and the state of Florida, which helped us to be able, along with your contributions, to be able to match um, for the state of Florida at a $100,000 grant. So we're really grateful. <laughs> and. Even though Anna is not here right now, um, Anna Eskimani, she was part of helping us get that grant by writing a letter of support for Creole Day and for what Creole Day does for the community. So I'm really grateful to Anna and her team as well. So thank you, Anna. <laughs> and then I also want to say a huge thanks to uh, Rob Smith, Rob and Denise Smith. Rob, are you, there you are. Can you please stand up? Yeah. Rob is, yeah. Rob is the founder and principal of E2 Construction, E2 Homes and Construction. They are um, an environmentally, uh, they are a leader in, in, in environmental construction. And they also, Rob, when he was, uh, back in the 90s, he was an art camp student here at Creole Day. <laughs> so when Peter approached him about, when Peter and, and Dean approached him about the possibility of doing this work, he said, well, I guess this could be my good project of the year. And it really was because the project was over $600,000, uh, went $206,000 over budget. And, and Rob uh, donated that in, in uh, wow. materials <laughs> and services. Rob also called in several vendors uh, and, and um, his, you know, the people that he works with regularly to give us a discount on our service on services as well. 
So Rob, I mean, we cannot thank you enough. It's, it was a huge gift. We're really, really grateful to you. And um, yeah. <laughs> I also want to thank uh, Mauricio Matha, who um, was Hunt and Brady Architects, who kind of got us rolling with the project, doing some preliminary drawings for the project. I don't think, I don't know if Mauricio is here today, but I wanted to thank him publicly. And also, I uh, really would like to sh thank John Drake of Apple, Green Apple Architecture, who also gave his design drawings for the whole, d design and specs for the whole project pro bono. So thanks to John. Is he here? Where? Oh, John, wave your hand. Yay! Thank you, John. And then finally, I just really want to thank all the volunteers, ceramics um, and sculpture, 3D volunteers and other volunteers for helping to make this a reality, um, and the, also our landscape volunteers, Eric, wherever you are. Um, it, because it, of course, without our volunteers, our fellowship artists, and um, our faculty who worked above and beyond, this would never be able to come together. And so I'm very, very grateful <laughs> to all the volunteers as well. Thank you. Thank you, Betsy. Thank you, Bob. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you all for coming out on this a beautiful day. I don't think we needed to do a lot of arm twisting to come out <laughs> today. It's such a happy and, uh, and joyous occasion. I told my staff for the last two weeks, we're all nervous. There's so much work to be done to get the campus ready. I said, you know, but we really don't need to be nervous because we're not asking anybody for anything. All they're doing is say thank you. <laughs> and we're saying thank you to all of you who are here and all the many people who are, who are not here who already made this possible. Yeah. Most times when, especially not-for-profits organizations, when they do construction projects, and we've been there before, you know, you, you, you end the project with, with debt because you, you had more expenses and you couldn't step away from it. You had to, you had to do it, you know? And I was able to tell my staff, I said, you know, all the bills are paid. It's all done. We raised all the money, right? right. We can move forward to do other things. <laughs> I stood right over there 24 years ago on that little brick platform that has the names in it who helped us with that first capital project 20, 25, 24, 25 years ago. And we had a beautiful day just like this, a couple hundred people here, where we were celebrating the very first capital improvement project Creel had ever done. <laughs> In the year 2000, 24 years ago, Creality was 25 years old. It was founded in 1975. For the first 25 years, it existed with the same footprint of classroom, offices, and galleries, right? But had grown almost triple in size. So that was the need at that time for us to do our first capital project, which funded the second gallery that's behind you, the second painting studio, the kitchen, the first air conditioned bathrooms, it was a big deal back then, <laughs> right? And uh, we immediately filled those, filled those uh, classrooms. Back then, our growth uh, was mostly in painting and drawing and photography, so that's where, we, that's where we basically expanded. So in the subsequent 24 years, we did four more capital improvement projects, each time raising money from our members and students, writing grants and so forth. And each time it was in response to a, a need with the capacity that we needed in our classrooms, with the demand of our students, with, with the changing demographics. You know, a long time ago, we just had evening classes. Now we got classes seven days a week, Sunday afternoon and Sunday evening. And people have more flexible schedules and so forth. So the capital campaigns that came in the next two decades, they funded paving the parking lot, more bathrooms, roofing jobs, you know, all these kind of things. But in the two years leading up to the COVID pandemic in 2018 and 2019, the board, the staff and I realized that the growth in the 3D programs, primarily wheel throwing and hand building in ceramics, were totally unstoppable. Within a matter of a few short years, the enrollment in those programs 
doubled. Where 20 years ago, ceramics and sculpture were very small programs. They were no longer small programs. Our facility was completely outdated. They would have to literally, in the morning, teach a hand building class, move things out of the way, bring the wheels in, and it was just very, 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 very cumbersome. So in 18, we put together a big campus renovation plan. Also, our office was tiny. We were working on top of each other, and it included putting a second floor on the office, uh, doubling the ceramic space, adding space to uh, basically everything we did now except the office, right? And uh, those were good plans, and we were going to start raising money, and then COVID came, and of course, it put a stop to everything. I actually did not think that in my tenure as uh, in the leadership position at Creolde, because we all, you know, transition one time or another, right, that I would still see us going back to that project because we all thought, like the rest of the country, it would take us years to recoup from COVID as it did from, from, from the recession 10 years before, right? And if you've been around, you know that was not the case. Creolde was only closed for six weeks. Uh, by 2021, we were back to pre-COVID levels of enrollment. And by the fall of 21, we already started having waiting lists. So I went back to the board and I said, you know, that mothballed plan we have from pre-COVID, I think we need to take it off the shelf, but we need to fast track it. Unfortunately, scrap the plans to the office. Nobody wants to pay for that anyway, right? <laughs> the administrators and so forth, let them work wherever they can work, right? <laughs> So uh, we cut the project basically in half and only concentrated on expanding uh, the classroom space. We started raising money in the fall of 21 and we moved into the new facility this January. In 28 months, we went from raising the money, writing the grants, approving the grants, hiring a construction company, getting the designs done, and doing all of this without stopping one single program. So the staff here really needs to be commended, the faculty for working through all this. Because it wasn't always easy. We knew we couldn't afford, you know, just saying, well, let's just close ceramics and sculpture for six months while we do construction and lose $100,000. That was just not, you know, something that we were able, were able to do. So what did all this really do for Creolde and what is it doing right, right now, right? Uh, we doubled the space in ceramics. There are now two separate studios, one for wheel drawing and one for ceramics, where literally side by side, these has classes can take place with two different instructors. There's sliding doors in the middle that can be opened up for special events, guest workshops, and so forth. There is right behind us uh, an enlarged and much safer glazing room where now people can, multiple people can work in there, not just one or two. There's a uh, state-of-the-art ventilation system in there. There is, for the first time, a private working studio for the fellowship students. The fellows are the people who do a lot of the work in the studios that cannot be absorbed by the small paid staff. And they're sort of in a work-learning exchange program here. And they have keys. We call the keys to the kingdom. They can come and go as they want, but where are they going to work when there's always classes, right? They don't want to come at midnight. So now they have a private studio that they can go in anytime they want and, uh, and, and work. We also, right over here, where Bob is standing, we built a third kiln room with, with two large additional uh, electric kilns to help with that firing need and capacity that the present 265 ceramic students produce. It's a lot of people. They do a lot of beautiful work, but that all needs to be fired and glazed and all this <coughs> stuff needs to be done to it. That's incredibly time and, and space consuming. So in five years, ceramics has doubled in enrollment. In 10 years, it has tripled in enrollment. So there's a, literally an explosion in that, in, that, in, that, uh, in that art medium. And I also want to credit Jeff Rogers, who we hired about a year and a half ago to be the head of the ceramics program. He had a lot of positive influence. We made really good changes to the design plans, the workability for the studio. And I tell him, I said, you know, the one thing you're gonna be always remembered for, you put the whole department on wheels, 
You can see it. everything is on wheels. Everything rolls, you know? And that's really great because it's a lot of heavy lifting that people have to, they have to do. And, you know, Creality has people of all ages, not just fit 28-year-olds, you know, that, 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 come, that come work and, uh, and, and stu study here. David Comby, uh, who is the, the head of our sculpture program, he's benefiting from about a 35% enlarged teaching studio. It's in the other building. You see it when you tour there. And uh, you know, it has new lighting, it has new air conditioning, it has all new furniture, it has new uh, professional sinks. The lighting is all brand new. He finally gets that workspace that he's wanted for forever. You know, he worked in that little tiny studio before. There's a tiny studio right next to it, which we never had before, and that's our jewelry studio. So for the first time, we have a dedicated 100% to jewelry. And this is Stefan's Alexandra's program, and you have to see it. It's a really cute place. It's very old world, and, uh, you know, and, and people work there with all their, their jewelry equipment. It has a really good, good feeling to it. My favorite studio is the one way in the back in the other building. And that is the headquarter of our young artist program and also where our community groups come in, the field trip groups with Orange County, they come in there. It just has a huge window. It looks, you know, out the back and it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's a lovely place. So E2 completed their construction in late January. Meanwhile, the entire contents from the studios were in big trailers in the parking lot and our staff, Primarily those four people I mentioned with the assistance of lots of others and volunteers and students and faculty uh, had to move everything back into the new studios and 10 days later uh, in second week in uh, February we started classes and we've been you know going at it you know ever ever since uh, we can't thank everybody who's made this possible but I do want to recognize uh, the admin staff in the office who was part of all this, you know, we kind of co-suffered together through a project like this and they helped with fundraising and with, with dealing day to day with the, with the construction people that were here and the program interruptions and how do we go around them and, uh, and, and so forth and still, and still move on, you know. And uh, John Baker, who is our facilities and special events manager who, uh, you know, this, he takes care of this campus and during construction and after construction, there was a lot more to take care of. The last two months, we pretty much spent upgrading the outdoors, the landscaping, the irrigation, the pump that runs, you know, everything that could break broke and had to also be replaced. And then you know how it is, when you look at beautiful new buildings, then the others don't look so good anymore. Then you have to start <laughs> painting them and doing all this kind of stuff. I, I wanna also acknowledge my wife, Betsy, for uh, just uh, working with, with the grants on uh, the Dr. Phillips Foundation. Dr. Phillips is not a, one of those places you just walk up to the door and say, we want to do a grant. You have to be invited. And before you do that, you have to build a relationship, right? And uh, I remember when it got to the point after phone conversations and all of this, I said, I want to go to them. I want to go into their beautiful space down in the Dr. Phillips neighborhood. And we met face to face with, with the CEO there. And, and, and Betsy <coughs> set all that up. She continued moving that relationship forward to where we really got to the point where they said, okay, we're ready, you can submit now. We pretty much knew that that would, was gonna be you know, producing the grant. The state of Florida, we love and hate them, you know? <laughs> it's always up and down, you know? You never know if you're gonna get the money or not, you know? <laughs> it's not your fault. You're one of the big supporters. There is Anna Escalani. Thank you. I go every year with the advocacy group with United Arts, with Jennifer and, and Terry Olson and others, and we go visit the legislators and so forth, and we meet so many wonderful people. But, you know, it's a lot of people. It's a democracy. They all have an influence, and one year arts funding is really big. Next year it's really small, right? So this $100,000 grant was first approved, recommended for approval, and then it didn't make the list. We were hanging at the edge. All the grants above us were approved. We were the first one off the list. After we got a great review and everything, 
And then a few things changed around with the budget process and our project was brought back in. You know, so that was, Betsy monitored all that and I'm very, thank, I'm very thankful, very thankful for that. So, you know, it's, uh, it's a great project and uh, I want to thank the Creality Board, you know, there's only eight of them, nine, just got a new one, board member, they're volunteers, they're donors in time and in money and they give and they give and then give. Uh, our president, Dean Jennings, uh, was there from, from the, from the get-go, you know, planning all of this. He was there with me during COVID constantly for safety reasons, like doing, redoing procedures and, and all of this. And then the work with Dr. Smitter, you know, is just incredible experience for me. Uh, I learned so much about, about raising money from him and uh, I'm very, very appreciative for, for, for that, for that experience. So, so you know, Together, uh, we made all we made all this possible, and now, like this is not enough good news. You're going to hear some more, and Dean Jennings, our board president, is going to make the final presentation. Thank you, Peter, and thank you everybody for coming out today. Uh, bear with me. That's, I know it's hot. I, the sun it looks beautiful unless you're underneath it. <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, let me let me uh, let me tell you that it, it's it's my great pleasure right now to announce a very generous donation uh, on behalf of Crealde by a longtime Crealde supporter, uh, a longtime sculpture student, former board member, and a past board president, Dr. William Platt. <laughs> many many years ago in 1980. Um, Dr. Platt became one of David Cumbie's first sculpture students while working professionally as a senior military officer in the Marine Corps. Uh, under David's tutelage, uh, Dr. Platt blossomed into a prolific sculptor whose sculptures today, uh, uh, whose sculptures have twice represented Crealde at the Epcot <coughs> Flower and Garden Show. Wow. <laughs> Today, three of his works are on permanent display locally, uh, one at the Lake Concord Sculpture Garden, one at the Castleberry Sculpture House, and another here at our own Creole Day Sculpture Garden. <laughs> Dr. Platt has been the primary sponsor of the Sculpture Department of Creole Day for decades, in addition to his being a patron to many local artists during the same period. Donations of equipment and upgrades that he has provided to buildings and other things have provided or have enabled the sculpture department to grow successfully to where it is today in enrollment and programs. But most importantly, recently Dr. Platt made a very, very generous bequest to Crealde of a future gift equaling over three quarters of a million dollars. This, this is the largest donation that Crealde has ever received in its history, and we thank yes. him for that. Amazing. Um, the funds from his donation will be used to the, for the construction of a new building called the Platt Woodworking and Metal Smithing Studio. Wow. Uh, the, the new building will enable the uh, existing metal smithing program to grow as well as provide space for a brand new program in woodworking to come to Crealde, which Crealde does not currently have. Uh, the future Platt Studio building will also include a new foundry in your, to replace the old foundry, which will have state-of-the-art technology, and it will be located approximately in the same location as the existing foundry is now overlooking the lake. Oh. It's, really nice. it's hoped that the studio building will contain around 3,000 square feet of indoor and outdoor workspace. Wow. So we're hopeful for that. Thank you, everybody, and I just I know that I speak for all of the Creole family when I say to Dr. Platt how deeply appreciative we are of your very, very generous gift, sir. And if I may, please join me in giving him a round of applause. Yeah.
That's it. Thank you. Thank you.